My name is Raider Lane. I'm a park ranger here at Grand Canyon National Park, which was certified as an international dark sky park back in 2019. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Hull. I am a solar astronomer and the executive director of Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. Flagstaff is the first international dark sky community. It received that designation in 2001. The IDA dark sky community designation means that a community has committed to good lighting practices and procedures that preserve the quality of the night sky. The sky doesn't necessarily have to be dark. There's a dark sky community, uh, Fountain Hills is right on the Phoenix Metro, but it implies that the community has made a commitment to preserving uh, the quality of the skies within its boundaries and also participates in continuing awareness and education with the citizens of the community just to maintain commitment and interest in, in the designation and the quality of the night sky. So Grand Canyon is trying to combat light pollution using a two-phase approach. Uh, our first approach is to simply retrofit all the lights in the park to be dark sky friendly. We inventoried over 5,000 lights in this park over several years and realized uh, a good portion of those lights were not dark sky friendly. So uh, in a scale that is really unprecedented, we retrofit thousands of lights in this park to be dark sky friendly, meaning we shielded them, we put warmer bulbs inside them, we made them only as bright as they needed to be, we turned them off when they, when they could be turned off. I mean, we had put some on timers, for example. We questioned whether or not some of these lights even needed to be there. And using these multiple approaches, we were able to uh, retrofit uh, over 67% of the lights in the park with a goal to make 90% of our lights dark sky friendly this year and over the next several years make 100% of our lights night sky friendly. I thought it was very significant when Fountain Hills, which is right on the edge of the Phoenix Metro, received an IDA dark sky community designation. Because of the size of that metro area, the sky there isn't very dark, but Fountain Hills has made that commitment within its own borders to use good lighting practices that don't contribute to the degradation of the night sky. Now imagine if every sub-community in the area did that, you'd start making progress. That's one of the cleverest things about how the IDA has set that up. It allows anyone to make that commitment and be part of the dark sky movement. Flagstaff is located in a pretty remote area. You can see the sky glow of Phoenix 100 miles away, but it sits on the horizon and there's just not a lot else around. We're surrounded by national forest, which prevents a lot of development to the north. We've got the Grand Canyon, can't exactly build in there. And so, you know, it's just, it's a good spot to preserve dark skies. And in fact, all of Northern Arizona, because of its expanse, its relatively clear skies, uh, it's really a dark sky and, and astronomy haven. We're one of the darkest night skies in the United States. I mean, due to our elevation and the over 300 nights of clear dark skies and the dryness of the atmosphere, uh, if all else were equal, Grand Canyon would be one of the darkest night skies in the United States. There are no light pollution anywhere. Dark skies are critical to astronomical discovery, research, and even amateur astrophotography because equipment these days is extremely good. You know, an amateur who makes a modest investment will have a very high quality, very sensitive astrophotography system. 
Major research telescopes are even more sensitive, exquisitely sensitive. And in fact, we do research programs looking for faint objects right down to even below the natural brightness of the nighttime sky, a completely unpolluted night sky. So any trace of artificial sky glow is erasing some of those views. And this is why, of course, observatories tend to be located in remote areas. But the worldwide transition on the ground of outdoor lighting from legacy systems like high pressure sodium to LEDs has dramatically increased the ground-based sky glow and now we're entering the era of what we sometimes call the industrialization of space, this explosion in the number of satellites. And that's happening because space is becoming accessible to the private sector and to nimble companies with resources and a business model and a vision like SpaceX and OneWeb. And there are multiple uses of space, right? It's not just astronomy. And all of us use space every day when we talk on our phones or navigate with our phone or, or check the weather forecast. So you know, it's not necessarily uh, per se a bad thing that there are satellites, but tens of thousands of them could really transform the night sky. And that's been a concern recently in astronomy. How do we just put some ground rules in place up there to make sure that as a as collective humanity, we're not doing something with a lot of consequences we haven't really thought about yet. <laughs>
a critical part of maintaining exemplary dark sky standards. It's not something you see in a lot of communities, uh, particularly as communities are switching to LED lighting. The default is to install white LEDs, which have a very broad spectrum with a lot of blue in them, and that, that creates a lot of glare and a lot of sky glow. Flagstaff is a leader in showing a better way to do it to preserve even darker skies. Some of the tips uh, we can recommend to make your communities or your home even night sky friendly is to do a survey and an inventory of the lights around your neighborhood or your house itself. Determine whether or not you need that specific light fixture at all. If you do need that light fixture, make sure that it's fully shielded, that the light is directed to where you need it and where you need it only. Uh, make sure that you are using the light only when you need it. If it's not being used, do you have a motion sensor? Or do you, can you simply turn it off? Uh, make sure that you're using warmer color lamps. Uh, we want to avoid bright white and blue lights. We want to move more towards the amber, warmer colored lights uh, that are easier on the eyes and that can preserve your night vision. Um, uh, and then we also want to just, you know, use the just the amount of brightness that you need in your light fixtures and nothing more. If you combine all these things together, uh, it's incredible how quickly the problem of light pollution sort of cleans itself up. So what could you do to preserve dark skies? Now, individually, you can use basic good lighting practices such as shielded lighting, which will actually improve the quality of the light on the ground because you're putting it all down where you need it and not blasting it up into the sky or over into your neighbor's yard, which often can cause some, some friction, right, between neighbors. Um, so, so that's one very simple thing that absolutely anybody can do. Um, collectively, we should be advocating with our elected officials for good lighting practices, preservation of the nighttime sky. And this is not just about astronomy, but there are compelling environmental and human health reasons to not disrupt the natural cycle of light and dark. Uh, this is, you know, anytime you're dealing with dark sky policy and regulation, well, you're in the arena of policy and regulation, and that's communities have to think about that. They have to budget it against the expenses of everything else they're trying to do. So elected officials need and want to hear from you. And this is one thing that's become abundantly clear in dark sky discussions here in Arizona, whether it's uh, locally or at the legislature in Phoenix, the elected officials genuinely consider themselves to be public servants and they want to hear from you on the issues that matter to you. And dark skies in Arizona are a very important issue because we're one of the astronomy capitals of the world with, you know, the uh, capital investment in astronomy and optics in the state is like five billion dollars and supports many, many thousands of jobs. So it's, it's an economic driver for the state. It promotes astrotourism. It, it brings tourists to, to our, our beautiful state. So there are lots of compelling reasons to do it, but you know, officials need to hear those reasons and they need to be coming from their constituents.